I can't believe I'm actually about to say this, but I'm pumped <laughs> for the season finale of Supergirl. How? How did this show manage to get me so pumped for it? I don't get it. It was so bad early on, and now it's actually gotten good. I'm excited. Okay, let's talk about it. This is uh, the 19th episode, Myriad, and like the title says, this is about Myriad. Uh, we're finally finding out more about it, luckily in the first few minutes. It's not something that they're trying to figure out the whole episode. Oh, what is Myriad? We need to try to find out. Let's look up the... No, they figure it out in the first few minutes. Um, kind of figure out Nan's plan. Um, okay. I think the best way to go about this is to discuss the few things that I didn't like in this episode. Because this is probably, it's not the first episode where there were more things that I liked that I didn't. Um, but this is definitely, it's definitely the closest to being almost nothing that bothered me, you know, like, I've had, there was one other episode, uh, the one where she turned evil for the episode, that was the only one that I can look at it and say, there's like only one thing that bothered me in that episode, this one had two, um, <clears throat> hang on, I think, okay, three, but the, the third one isn't really story related, okay, the two story related problems I have, one, the fact that Maxwell Lord just happened to be prepared for this, and for some reason just happened to give the earrings to Cat Grant, it just so happened. What a quinky dink! I don't know. I, they they explained it pretty well. You know, he he found out that they were going to use his satellites, so he went ahead and created something that could block it out. Okay, his reasoning for giving it to Cat Grant is because they clearly are setting up that they have a thing going on, okay, but it did feel kind of coincidental that the two people that are not affected by Myriad happen to be, one, a super smart genius that could probably figure out how to stop the Kryptonians, and two, the woman that can inspire Supergirl whenever she's in her darkest moment, you know, whenever she's at her hopeless, uh, or most hopeless. So, you know, it was a little bit coincidental. And then the other coincidental moment, Supergirl is like, okay, Super, Superman's coming. And I'm just like, wait, what? He's, he's coming? He's gonna, they're finally gonna have Superman on the show? That's awesome. And then he's flying and all of a sudden he stops and flies down. I'm like, you did. You did not just sell outs. Like, are you serious? I get that okay, you don't want Superman and then Superman in the DC movies. I kind of understand that, but come on! How could you not... How could you tease us with the thought of, oh, Superman's coming to help, and then just to have him be affected by Myriad? Like I said, sell out. They, they clearly did not want to pay the money to have some actor be Superman, so they're just like, okay, he's going to be affected by Myriad, and we're going to explain it away because he's been on Earth longer than Kara. Not that much longer. It was only like, what, eight years, maybe? Like, I think he was, he was a toddler whenever he was sent, and she was like a young child. I mean, there, there wasn't that much of a difference that would cause him to be affected by it, not her. It's still alien DNA that he has. I don't know. It just, it seemed very coincidental. It was frustrating to see the possibility of Superman and Supergirl finally fighting together and then he gets affected and now he doesn't fight. Anyway, the third problem, like I said, not really story related, but it's been kind of a running theme of the show every now and then. They bring up the whole girl power type thing where they talk about how amazing women are. Um, and this one, they... I think they've mentioned before that the president was female, um, and then some, like, Maxwell Lord's talking to the the general, and he says, you know, Mrs. President, you know, says, go ahead, and he's like, God help us, you know, God forgive us all, he's like, if there was a God, she wouldn't be, I'm like, she, really? 
<laughs> we're gonna be so into this whole concept of women are so much better than men that we're actually gonna make a reference to the fact that God's a woman. I'm like, really? Show. Just stop. You're you're awesome. You don't have to go into this whole like, you know, pushing this message of women are so much better than men because that frustrates me. Not because I'm a man, but because I don't. It's kind of like the shows that focus so much on how bad racism is, how bad sexism is. They focus so much on it that it almost gets annoying. You know, it's like, I get it, I understand it's bad, but you're focusing on it so much that I'm just like, I don't care anymore, just get on with the story. In this case, they focused on the whole women are awesome thing so much that at this point I'm just like, really, we're going to have the woman as a president and now we're going to say that God's a woman and wait, unless this is the future. In which case, she won the candidacy? No! <laughs> if Clinton wins the presidency, we're all screwed. Um, anyway. Sorry, just had to freak out for a second. So those are my three problems. On to the good stuff. Uh, for one, and this is probably the best thing about the episode, is how it ends. It sets up perfectly for next week. And on top of that, we finally get the Batman versus Superman fight we should have gotten in the movie. Where she clearly has some sort of suit that's going to emit kryptonite something that's going to weaken Supergirl's powers. Which means she's not going to be as strong. You know, she's not just going to be able to go and hold, hold her down. Like what Superman could have done to Batman in the movie. Unless he did this stupid kryptonite gas which only knocked out his powers for a few seconds. And so, basically, this is the suit that Batman should have had. Lined with kryptonite. She has a kryptonite sword. Obviously, it's going to be the same type of fight where... The superpowered one isn't going to try to kill the human one because in, in the movie, Superman's like, oh, he kidnapped my mom, so he's trying to make me kill you, so I'm not going to do it. In this one, it's her sister. Um, so it's still going to be a fairly one-sided fight as far as who's actually trying to go all out. Um, but still, it's, it's still more even because of this suit that she has. I'm sure... It looks like it has some kryptonite stuff that it's probably emitting, which is going to weaken her powers. That's what should happen in the movie, and we're getting it in Supergirl. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I've hated this so show so long, and somehow it's making smarter decisions in the end than Batman v Superman did. Frustrated there, happy here. Um, so that was good to see, and just... The intensity of that final scene, seeing Alex now in the suit being mind controlled, having to fight her sister, those are the stakes that I really want. Um, I don't know how that battle is going to end. Probably with neither of them dying, but. Um, you've got Martian Manhunter coming back with Alex, uh, but immediately gets attacked by Indigo. Threw her into the most combustible shed I've ever seen, but I don't care because it was an explosion and. I like explosions. Um, no, but, you know, very, very well shot scene. And then she, like, materializes back and then stabs him. Um, he's not dead. We saw him in the previews for next week. Uh, and honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that for a second. Um, like, next week for a second. One of the things that I like about how they've set this up is that it kind of feels like we may lose one of the main characters. Um... I don't think it'll be Martian Manhunter, just because he's he's kind of grown a following from what I hear. Uh, like a lot of DC fans are really wanting to see more Martian Manhunter, and this is the first time we've actually seen him uh, in any form of media recently. I think maybe maybe he's shown up in a cartoon somewhere that I haven't watched, but I mean, as far as 
and you look at all the other DC stuff, Martian Manhunter is here. You know, this is where he is. Uh, haven't heard about him in any of the Justice League stuff coming up soon, any of DC movies coming out soon. We haven't heard anything about that. So for right now, this is the only Martian Manhunter we've got. I'm pretty sure they're going to keep him around. Alex is an iffy. You know, she might... The way she was talking to her mom in this episode felt like one of those, you know, foreshadowing things. Like, I'll tell you when I come back. If I come back. Um, Maxwell Lord could be one where he finally decides he's going to sacrifice himself to save the world. Because um, they have been kind of building that up with his character a, a little bit in this episode. Um, probably not Cat Grant, just because... You know, she, she's a very powerful person. She's somebody Carl looks up to. That likely won't be somebody that Carl loses this soon. Um, and then we got... Who was the other two? Um, that was pretty much it as far as the main characters. I don't see Jimmy or Wynn being killed, even though they both try to jump off a building. But, but okay, talk about that scene for a second... That was kind of obvious. I mean, it was still an intense scene, but you've got Jimmy, you've got Wynn, and then you have this one woman that Kara just happened to mention her name, so that way we'd be like, oh, it's somebody that she knows. So that way when all three of them jump off, she saves Jimmy and Wynn, obviously, and then the girl dies. Still a good scene, because now she's effectively let somebody die on her watch just to save her two friends. So it's still a good scene, but it was kind of like, okay, so she's going to save two out of these three, right? And then the one that she doesn't save is going to be the one that we have no idea who she is. Um, so that that was a bit obvious, but still well done. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else I missed. The scene where Cat Grant is inspiring Supergirl again um, by telling her how she inspired her is it was kind of weird how she made the connection, but it was okay. It wasn't the best scene they've had, um, and it didn't really. I don't know. I knew this was coming because Supergirl was kind of at a moment where she was willing to let some innocent people die. And she was willing to not come back to National City just to stop Non and Myriad. Um, and she was willing to kill Non and all of his Kryptonian, uh, all of his Kryptonian associates, just because that's how desperate she was. And so here comes Cat Grant. She's all like, you know, listen, you. You can't give up. You have to have hope. And she's like, hope, that's how we'll stop them. And now they're doing something with hope. Um, I don't know. It was pretty weird how she came to the conclusion. But, you know, I'll be interested to see how they decide to stop this thing without killing Non. I, they're going to have to kill Non. I'm sorry. but it, It's got to happen, okay? <laughs> that's one thing that, oh my gosh, what the heck? I don't know where that came from. It's just out of nowhere. <clears throat> That's the one thing that Marvel's done well, is that some of these villains that they've had, it's like, okay, if you don't kill them, they're not going to stop. You're going to have to just... And so they have, for the most part, except for Loki, who's actually died three times, technically. He always comes back. Um, but, you know, like, they... They do a very good job of having them have to get rid of their villains. You know, they it's not like they can just go, okay, now we're going to put you into this cell and that's it. No, the, except for like the TV shows where some of these villains aren't as all-powerful as the movie villains. The movie villains kind of have to be stopped. Non feels the same way. Like, it doesn't feel like you can just throw them into this DEO cell and that'll be it. You know, you're going to have to really get rid of them. Crap. I wasn't tired when I started this review. I don't know what happened. Frustrating now. Um, the one final scene to talk about was the, the release of the DEO prisoners. For one, 
the woman that they had that they showed to actually get released it kind of came out of nowhere she's just like oh I offered Superman to marry me but he said no now I'm scorned and now I'm gonna fight Supergirl and I'll pledge allegiance to your non I'm like are you Ugh. oh it was probably the most cheesy scene in this entire episode it wasn't necessarily like bad story wise but it was really really cheesy and it just made me go oh gosh she needs please tell me she's not going to be like the main villain in this episode and then she gets stopped I'm like thank you um so yeah that was just it was kind of a scene thrown in there just so Supergirl can't just rush in and stop the prisoners from being released she has to stop this one alien and then Lucy and this other guard are shooting at her um uh, and then she turns on the her pod's jet thing and somehow doesn't burn Lucy or the DEO agent. Um, I don't know, that was... I was like, she's about to burn their faces off. And then they're both, like, perfectly fine. I'm like, okay. That's weird, but okay. And then stops the prisoners from being released and saves the day. But yeah, they've got a very good setup for the, the season finale. Um... Even if there are some coincidental moments, I'm still able to look past it because they finally got a good story uh, for these last two episodes, and that's good. Um, I can't wait to see her and Alex fight in the next episode because just from what I saw in the previews, like the couple shots they showed, it looks like it'll be an interesting fight. Uh, I hope that this is where most of their money went into the final episode, actually getting to see better CGI, see better fights. Hopefully this is where we'll get that. So, but yeah, overall I'm happy, excited to see what happens next. I'm actually excited for the season finale. So, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree? Um, favorite moments of this episode, favorite moments of the season so far. What do you want to see in the season finale? And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.